and uh, I'll be showing you the demos for these uh, particular attacks. And first, the SQL injection is something uh, you have a you use an SQL driven database, and there will be queries for it. Like if you want to access a user or something or a password, there are queries for each and everything. So uh, and we modify the queries according to our needs and if the uh, code isn't well written or not particularly sanitized then we may be able to get the control of the website so here is a lab and here it says that there is a sql injection vulnerability in the product category filter where the user selects a category the application carries out an sql query looking like this so this is the query and uh, and here in category there are different categories so uh, if i access gifts you can see in the url that there is a something called category equals to gifts so i'll try to modify this query uh, i want to modify so that it shows me not only the gifts category but every category so uh, if you see this the description it says to display all the products both released and unreleased and uh, we use generally uh, the basic sql injection we use is uh, with the r operator and we comment out the rest of the thing so what exactly happens is this is the query which uh, usually uh, takes place in this website so if you see this uh, just now i modified this query to like this so what exactly happens is And here, uh, one equals to one is always two. And these two uh, dashes or hyphens are uh, comments which comment out this whole part, the rest of the part in the query. So it doesn't matter if it is a released or unreleased. And it only uh, takes the true value uh, for category. So even if it isn't gifts, uh, it's true for every category. So this is what happens. Uh, when we write this query and if I access this you can see there are all products both released and unreleased so this is what happens in SQL injection and uh, SQL injection also has union attacks and blinding injection uh, just now when we uh, tried this SQL injection, we can see the results directly on our browser. But blind injection is something we won't actually be able to see any uh, results. Whereas union attacks is something if you want to access uh, different tables in the database, union attacks usually come under it. It is a bit uh, advanced, so you can uh, check it out later. And then there is command injection. Command, what is command injection? Uh, it is like you have a web application and you might gain control through this. You can execute OS level commands on the server. So, and that is command injection. As I said, uh, there is a 
tool called bird suit which helps us analyze uh, requests and responses And there is a built-in browser which you can uh, manually access the websites in it. Uh, then the HTTP history, you can uh, watch exactly what you're accessing the request and everything over there. And uh, the challenge description for this is this lab contains an OS command injection vulnerability in the products stock checker. Then uh, we need to uh, use this who am I command. Who am I is generally uh, used when we want to know which user is currently logged in uh, in which user is currently logged in. So it is a man. So uh, to analyze the request, you need to manually check each and everything. So if I check stop, there is 22 units. And if you see uh, the HTTP history in but should, there are many. And you can see this uh, product stock one. And uh, there is, we accessed a product which has ID one and the stock is something related to the store ID. If you want to manually change them, you can always send those particular requests to repeaters. And we need to execute who am I command, not exactly who am I. You, you may also execute other commands uh, which are in PPT. So if I try to execute who am I, and you see the request, uh, you can see here, uh, this is the user. So uh, who am I generally uh, tells you which user is currently logged in. And there are uh, different commands like uh, to check the current processes running and everything. If you, uh, you may also uh, read those websites, uh, I mean, those scripts, like you want to check what exactly is there on the server, then you uh, have this command called ls, which lists the uh, files in it, files and directory. You can see here there is a stock report.sh. It is a bash script. And if you want to read the script, you can cat. You can see this is the script. So uh, it actually depends on the particular website, like how deep is the vulnerability. In worst case, you may uh, have the code of that application, so or passwords of the uh, user in the backend related. So it's uh, quite dangerous. And then there is broken authentication, where uh, the uh, session cookies are usually weak, uh, the tokens uh, are usually not matched. And uh, if you see the description, it seems it 
tells us to reset Carlos password. Uh, we have a credentials of a uh, person and we need to reset this guy's password. And to exactly know what is uh, going on in an application, you can manually check through the website's HTTP history. There is also a plugin uh, to directly check through a particular browser, not the built-in one. So you can install it the extension. Uh, this is the password. What is this password? Peter. And this guy's email is this. There seems to be some email client. So I think it is a inbox for that email. Let's try this forgot password. We may find some proof. And I want to change this Wiener guy's password. So there is a link to reset the password. Let's see what that link is. And this is the password reset link. So uh, let me type in some one, two, three, four as new password. And now if we check the HTTP history, like what exactly is going on? You can see there is a link for code, password, and there seems to be a token assigned. And you can see here, uh, username equals Vayner and new password equals 1234. Generally, uh, broken authentication occurs when these type of tokens uh, usually have no value. Like even if you delete them or you ignore them, they usually work. That is what broken authentication is. They are usually weak. So if I try to change the username to uh, from Wiener to Carlos, that means uh, Carlos Carlos password will be updated. So I'll try changing to Carlos. And this is redirection so if you follow you can see here the 200 okay and it is green and then uh, so uh, this is just http history to actually uh, intercept and change the request you need to uh, turn on this intercept on. the password is changed but okay. 
uh, this link is something which I would like to capture. So I'll turn on the intercept and then let me click this link. Okay, okay. This is the one we need to edit. I guess we need to change the password again since we have already changed with this link. So there is an another link to change the password. If I click that. Doesn't let me just start the challenge again. Usually, it requires more uh, checking, like where exactly the vulnerability lies. So, you need to check all the options, like the forgot password one. You can see uh, what exactly I did this. First, uh, I logged into that Wiener Guys account with the given password. And uh, there is a, uh, when you click on forget password, there is a link uh, in your email. If you click it, you can change the password. So I captured that request in Burp Suit. If you see the HTTP history, this is the uh, request for that uh, link. And if you see here, there is a token assigned to that. And I changed the username from Wiener to Carlos with this same 1234 as password. Then uh, you can see the result in uh, this that it changed the password. So we need to log in to actually. Uh, Complete the lab. I didn't log in before. It didn't work. And that is for uh, broken authentication. And then there is XSS. XSS is, uh, I hope you guys learned a little bit of JavaScript during web development. I'll take up the doubts at the end. I can't properly see the text so i'll take up the doubts at the end and uh, as for xss it's uh, uh, you need a little bit knowledge of javascript for it and uh, xss is something uh, you execute uh, malicious scripts uh, from the attacker uh, usually it's uh, there are three types of xss reflected is something you'll be able to see uh, directly stored is when uh, it goes into the database, the script, 
like for example uh, an example of third exercise is when you uh, upload a script on a comment something like that and dom based is when you when the input isn't sanitized and it goes directly into the top document object model and post let's see reflected excesses it's quite easier and the description is we need to perform a cross site cross site scripting that calls the alert function and the vulnerability is in the search functionality and i hope you guys know uh, javascript a little bit and for this uh, alert function you may use anything uh, like you can use hat and if you click you will get a pop up you see hat and that is reflected excesses you may directly see it whereas third excesses is some it goes uh, the script goes in database and there is a stored excesses vulnerability in the comment functionality so to solve this lab we need to submit a comment that calls an alert function so whoever views the comment they automate then it automatically executes this uh, script which we are writing and the other users will have a pop up and we can write script here javascript and uh, this is how it works it just gets stored in the database and then there is dom based xss um, for this the input isn't sanitized it directly goes uh, into the uh, document which we, which the input is directly taken without sanitizing so we can actually use scripts for it uh, and if you right click there is an inspect element so uh, there is this search functionality and in the description they said it is vulnerable to dom based xss so suppose you want to search a number like 1 2 3 4 and here when inspecting the elements you search the one two three four input uh, there is a h1 tag so basically it might be this and if you search for it again and there is this image if you see it uh, this image uh, directly the one two three four which we searched directly goes uh, it takes the input so for first instead of 1 2 3 4 what if we uh, close the image tag and write our script beside it then uh, we can directly have this uh, pop up so i'll close the double quotes and the image tag and then we write our so you can see the power here uh, 
the input which we are giving directly goes into the image and it isn't sanitizing uh, anything so it is vulnerable and this is cross site scripting and next we have a uh, csrf vulnerability it is basically uh, when we when the attacker makes the victim to uh, do unwanted actions like uh, for example changing the victim's email address something like that and this is the lab here uh, in the description it is given that the labs email change functionality is vulnerable to csrf and we need to craft some html so if you see what csrf is and uh, like changing the email address is one of the attacks and so uh, how does csrf work a relevant action like changing an email address is a relevant action and cookie based handling you can say it down here and no unpredictable request parameters like you can predict the email change these kind of parameters so and this is the html and form you i hope you know html so uh, we'll be taking the input from here with the form and we'll be submitting the uh, this email change url and the method is post because we want to change the email and uh, the value will be the email of uh, our email address something uh, which the victim doesn't even know and this thing automatically submits the script so this is it and we need to change the viewer's email address and we need to upload it to exploit server and the credentials are already given i want to capture the http request so i'll be trying in this browser We already know the username and password. As you can see, uh, here we have a email address of this user, and there is an exploit server where we'll be writing our exploits to change the email address. But first, let's try to uh, upload. I mean, update this email. Suppose I wanted to update something like this. Then it updated. Then let's check the HTTP history. We may find something interesting. And here is the change email. and uh, to construct the exploit for this we need to know the url of of this link uh, to change the email address so i'll be popping the url and then if i go to exploit server you can see uh, there is the file the exploit which we'll be writing and it contains a head and the body which will be writing our exploit so uh, for this you can just copy this thing however we need to change this uh, url to the one which will be delivering the uh, the email change one 
Entendi. This is the URL and value. Let's change it to something like hacked. Okay, then uh, first let us store this. And then if we view the exploit, it should be delivered to the victim. Like it still isn't delivered, but it shows what's the result. We can see the email address is changed. And if we go to the exploit server and deliver this exploit to victim, it usually, uh, in real life, it usually involves like a bit of social engineering where you need to know uh, the uh, you need to paste this link and if the user clicks the link, the script executes, then it exploits and changes the orders. Usually, the best hackers are also really good at social engineering. And that is it for CSRF. And then there is SSRF, a uh, server -side so server side request forgery. It is when uh, suppose you have a website which you are trying to access. Then you want to access some other website. Uh, if you see in this picture, this guy is uh, trying to access some example.com and then he want to access this google.com through this site. So what if uh, this guy doesn't want to access google.com but some vulnerable website so uh, it's usually really risky and here the stop checks feature which fetches data from an internal system I guess that might be vulnerable. Then we need to uh, redirect, I mean request through this and we need to delete the user Carlos. I would like to capture the request again, so. And here there is a stop check feature. And we get the result. So if we see the HTTP history. And there is something stock API. I guess it fetches uh, from this side to check how much the stock is there. And if you see the description, there seems to be some admin. So let's try to change or uh, modify the request a little bit. I'll send it to repeater so I can manually change. And it's 200, it worked. And if we see here, there seems to be an admin panel, my account, users, and you can see there is Carlos delete, when delete. So we can actually delete and oh. Let me just cap intercept this so I can show you the results. 
लिखती है If I forward this request, you can see uh, we have an admin panel, and there are users Carlos and Wiener. We can delete them, and let me turn off the intercept again. Otherwise, we can't actually do it. So if I delete it, and there seems to be so. we either need to logged in as an admin or we need to uh, request from local host so again let's check the http history and this is the url for that so uh, we know that stock api is vulnerable so what happens if we uh, paste this link in that product stock so i'll send it to repeat again however we might need to uh, change it a little bit because we'll be requesting through local host and it's a redirection i guess it deleted so if we uh, go into it you can see it solved so the lab solved and this is ssrf which you uh, when you access something from a website and it basically points to an some other website and that is ssrf and next we have directory traversal it is something like uh, you can see uh, there is a path for uh, everything like if you check the url not me over here there is a path a uh, directory traversal comes here where we can change this path and access some other files which are not meant to be accessed on the server and that is directory traversal if you see this uh here you can see uh in this url the file equals file name dot php uh and in linux there are uh, different directories and this etc directory is uh, one of them and this password the usually the passwords are store, stored over there so if we can access this then it's really dangerous and this is directory traversal and if i show this it's in uh, in this there is a vulnerability in the display of product images so uh, the image uh, file must be directly without any sanitization so to solve the lab we need the contents of this file and these images must be the ones vulnerable and if you can see in this url there is a uh, after the query we have file name equals 6.jp and we can actually change like uh, it's mostly like hit and trial method we don't exactly know where the files are located so let's just try and this image cannot be displayed because it contains errors but if it doesn't then we may be able to access it so if we go back you 
can see the lab is solved. Basically, it allows you to uh, read the contents of the other files in the directory. And as for the resources, uh, the basic uh, models like OS size and uh, TCP IP model and internet and the basics are in this and there are some Linux commands too which are important for the networking. And if you guys are interested in learning web exploitation, uh, the first one I would recommend will be ports figure. As you can see the labs before I solved are all from them, from that website. It's really good and hacker one is really a little bit tough. And Pico CTF and TriHack me are for beginners. Over the wire, Natas, if you can solve it, it is good actually. And that is it. You can ask if you have any doubt. Ma'am, how do we know which payload to send? Uh, you, if you uh, go to the Ports Figure website, usually there will be examples of different payloads which you can try. And it comes with experience as uh, you do the uh, labs and solve the CTFs. It comes with experience. Generally, there may be a hint or two, so you can actually guess. Like in the labs I solved, uh, I already know where exactly the vulnerability is. But uh, that is in the case if we uh, try uh, attacking a real world website. We might need to manually check each and every button and link. And we might need to modify them to know where vulnerabilities are there. So if you guys have any other doubt, you can ask. Hello, no doubt. Yes. Ma'am, you said that today there will be three people. So, it was late. Can you repeat again? Ma'am, today I asked that there will be three people. कितने बजे लेने हैं तो फिर 3 पीएम बोला था हाँ but the links aren't actually this room isn't available during 3 पीएम so we had to take 10 I think there is a scribble final event going on right now and we thought that there might be not many students so we just took now I'm really sorry I couldn't take them and the possibility of a website having a vulnerability. Uh, usually, I think uh, everything connected to internet is vulnerable somehow. But uh, to attack it, we may also need resources like uh, really high speed processors in some case. It actually depends on the website you are trying. So, Basically, I don't think uh, the labs just now I solved, they are really, really vulnerable, vulnerable which you might not actually uh, face during the real world. So, I don't think it's really uh, easy to find a vulnerability. And any, any other doubts? You can ask uh, regarding yesterday's class or crypto forensics too.
then should I end the mint? I think none of you have any doubt. Yep, we need to check. Uh, but generally, uh, there is a uh, like there are automated tools for uh, most of the uh, vulnerabilities. Like for SQL injection, you have a Linux tool called SQL Map. Uh, it automatically uh, inputs everything and checks uh, if the certain parameter is vulnerable or not. You can't just give the link. You need to uh, give it a parameter like. If you see there is a product cat, uh, the category might be vulnerable. You might need to the give of uh, give the link of the whole thing. Uh, so SQL injection, there are automated tools like that, but you need to know the concepts like what exactly is going on to use them. Uh, 